this is Joseph Coco. I am interviewing two artists at the end of TCAF 2015. We're actually at our hotel room right now. <laughs> um, I'm interviewing them on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process blog, Keep on Truckin' Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourselves, please. Well, I'm, um, I'm Kate, and this is Jen. I'm uh, Kaiju. Mm-hmm. And we're in, a, yeah, we're in a group called Kaiju. It's okay. basically just us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and what brought you to TCAF this year? Oh, um, well, our, our publisher, um, Chromatic Press, was um, printing our first um, short story, so we figured, oh, we should be here for that. Okay. So we decided to um, explore the city and go to TCAF. Mm -hmm. our, our short story is called The Ring of Saturn, mm -hmm. and it was being serialized online at sparklerimonthly.com. Right. As a online comic. Yeah, it's it, still there. Yeah, but it's kind of a subscription based sure. um, site, but now they've just gone free. Mm -hmm. So our comic is actually available to read for free online. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we could find that at Sparkler's website? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what other conventions are you guys planning on doing? Oh, we're going to do Denver Comic Con, uh, which is in like a week after we get back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll also be at um, ND, NDK. Oh, yeah, we'll be at NDK, which mm -hmm. is another Colorado um, anime convention. And right. Nan Nandescan, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this was your first time coming to Toronto. Uh, what were your experiences with TCAF? Did you have a, a table specifically at TCAF, or were you just um, representing uh, Chromatic Press's table? Uh, we didn't exactly represent their table. We just kind of hung around the table yeah. and um, we we had like a signing for like an hour but okay. basically they handled everything for us so we just kind of explored and had did our own thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, can you tell me a little bit about um, you said it was Ring of Saturn I'm sorry mm -hmm. yeah uh, the Ring of Saturn is a historical piece it's a musical historical piece about um, a young woman who goes to an all-girls school, and she's a student of Gustav Holst. Um, it's kind of about her emotional and artistic journey during um, wartime in, um, in Britain. Okay. Yeah. And what was the inspiration for that story? Um, well, my dad was talking about it um, a few years ago. He's like, oh, did you know that Holst um, taught at an all-girls school? And um, his original planets were um, were first composed as um, for piano for two pianos, and um, his students would often play his because he was composing it as he was there. They would play his um, songs, and I thought, well, that's really interesting. That's not really something you would think um, someone of like especially a woman of that era would play music like that so I'm like that's really interesting I'd like to write a story about that cool. or the story kind of you know came to me as um, I thought about it <laughs> yeah and um, like I'm interested in making a female protagonist that has her own drive and has her own ambition other than other than a relationship like I want I right. want a female person who, an independent yeah, character. who's yeah. a actually are interested in her career and in her um, dreams mm -hmm. and things like that so it was really fun mm -hmm. to be able to do and work on a character like that mm -hmm. yeah. definitely what were your respective roles in the project uh, we wrote it together we thumbnailed it together we kind of, kind of trade off we, I do okay. So like, when one of you gets stuck, the other picks up, basically? Yeah, yeah. Or we usually go like five pages each. We get stuck sometimes and help each other out. Okay. That kind of thing, yeah. And was it always intended to be published as both um, uh, online and in a physical print? Yeah, it was, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the reception of the book at TCAF? Is, was it actually, was a physical book debuting here? Or it's yeah, been the press book for was, a while? Yeah, was uh, debuting here. Yeah, awesome. it seems like it was... We got a pretty good response from what I could tell. We didn't stay that long at the table. Yeah, so, we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to talk to the uh, press afterwards to see how things went. But. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it seemed to go pretty well from what, I, what we could see. Yeah. 
Right. So <laughs> you mostly came to the convention for networking purposes, and yeah. since you weren't actually there physically selling your book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. just to just sense. to explore the con and um, see what it was like. Like we've heard really good things about it. So. <laughs> awesome. And you mostly do cons in the um, Colorado area, you said, or you do a lot of New York cons? Uh, mostly Colorado, New York, because we have we have friends in New York. We went to school in New York. Okay. Um, and Colorado is really accessible for us, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I know you guys have a pretty strong um, manga influence style. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you say that that affected um, who ultimately ended up publishing your book, or uh, you just reached out to Chromatic Press? We or? definitely reached out to Chromatic Press because we knew that they accepted that sort of thing. Right. Um, I don't think there are many publishers that do, but Chromatic, um, on top of accepting that style, does comics aimed towards women and that's the sort of thing we wanted to do as well so right yeah. so your story was just in line perfectly with like the yeah. types of uh, books they publish in yes, general exactly. okay mm -hmm. awesome uh were there um any particular hiccups with um coming to tcaf like you said this was your first um canada show so oh uh, well it was uh <laughs> I know you guys took a bus here. Yeah, so we I took a bus a, from New York been a City, rough. Yeah. and that was pretty rough. Like <laughs> we only slept about three hours that day. Yeah, but luckily you didn't. You didn't have to get to a table by nine yeah, o'clock on yeah, Saturday, yeah. but yeah, they still have to be engaging enough with people to take mm -hmm. advantage of being at the conference. Yeah, yeah. Or convention, sorry. <laughs> so, um, what are you planning on doing in the future? Um. We have some personal things planned. Um, mm -hmm. We plan on, um, I don't know, we're going to just try a lot of different things. Yeah, um, probably, like, I have a personal project planned, and we're trying out for um, the silent manga contest. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is currently going on, and they're accepting entries, so we're thinking of, like, doing a couple shorts. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so how does your studio normally go about um, deciding on a project? Um, you guys are open towards working on distinct things, or you like working on things uh, as a group for the most part? I mean, right now, just for working on things as a group. So. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We um, <clears throat> usually we um, we come up with a bunch of ideas. Right. Like we'll spend like a few days just coming up with tons and tons of ideas and then see what really like takes off and um or we we send some to our editor and see what she likes and, if, and we base uh what project we want to do based on like what we want to do and kind of what she wants to do that and kind it of has thing. to be something that really gets us really excited yeah yeah like if we don't get excited about it, it won't really pitch We're like it. okay yeah. maybe this is not <laughs> the right fit kind of thing yeah <laughs> how did studio kaju get started Oh, well, we met in college, mm -hmm. and um, we started working on a project together over... Like a couple of years ago? Yeah, like over the summer a couple of years ago. Yeah, and we are like, oh, why don't we do, why don't we work on this together? Because we, we usually did stuff on our own. Yeah, we usually do it separately, but then okay. I think we each made a character. Yeah. And we're just <laughs> like, oh, let's do a crossover. So yeah. we do a crossover, yeah. and it's like, we need to make this longer. <laughs> <laughs> So you just casually started working on projects together, yeah, basically, yeah, and then uh -huh. it became something that should just be a formal uh, union, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, it was, started out as fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how often do you guys publish books in the studio? Like one a year or a little less? Oh, uh, we've done two this year. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah. mean, they're both, they're not quite a full volume. They have, um, okay. The Ring of Saturn is about 70 pages, mm -hmm. right. and the, uh, our other work, Mahou Jose Chimaka, is about 115, yeah. and which Sparkler will release um, hopefully in, in July. In July. Yeah, they'll, re mm -hmm. cool. they'll be releasing a um, printed the, form in July. Yeah, the yeah. physical yeah. volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was, that was my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your uh, Ring of Saturn is available in a physical form mm -hmm. through Sparkler as well, or only through Chromatic Press? Well, Sparkler is uh, Sparkler Monthly is the magazine that Sparkler that um, Chromatic publishes. Right. 
So they have an online shop. Yeah. Right. It's just a division of Fanatic yeah. Press. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure. But yeah, it's definitely <coughs> available through, through Sparkle, Sparkle Monthly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's their main website for um, for everything. For everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so would you have any advice to a small studio that's considering tabling at TCAF for the first time? Well, we've done some. We haven't tabled at TCAF exactly, but from other cons. Um, Definitely think about um, how your table looks. Like, um, make sure it looks really full. Um, and um, just attracting say. attracting yeah. the right type of person. Is that yeah, what you're yeah. And also yeah. say like uh, present yourself. Uh, like uh, present yourself in like in a way that you kind of voice the product you want to sell. Like if you're an original comic person, then mm. definitely like make a big banner about your comic yeah. you know yeah. instead of having a lot of fan art because then you might be remembered as the fan art person rather than the original comic person so yeah. like definitely know why you're at the con and mm-hmm. kind of like gear towards like you know why you're there <laughs> kind of thing yeah, yeah like your table is you you want to sell when you're selling your table or when you're presenting your table you're selling yourself you're Oh, not in like a bad way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, I hope you guys had a good TCAF. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs)